Welcome to this week's episode of Soul School. Hey, Kevin, how are you today? I'm doing great, Laura, and happy birthday. Everybody in the world needs to know that today's your birthday, the day that we're recording this, at least. So happy birthday. I'm glad you were born. <laughs> Thank you, baby. Thank you, baby. I know. My friend was telling me, um, I can't believe you're working and recording a podcast on your birthday. And, and I said, well, I'm just chatting with my friend, Kevin. So it's this really what we do. This is what we do. Um, Kevin, today you're on the hot seat to talk to us a little bit about something that inspires you, uplifts you, that you feel connected to. You were sharing a little bit pre-show and I was like, save it. I love it so much. I want to hear it yeah, with everybody. Yeah. So you were, you were telling me how it was raining and you had a blazing clarity. So I thought maybe yeah. even share that because it was, it drew me in right away. Yeah. Yeah. I have a little story to tell. Um, this happened to me last weekend. It was a Saturday morning and it was raining and that's what woke me up was the sound of the rain on my window. It was early and you know how, you know, you just wake up and like, you're, you're not tired enough to fall back asleep and you're kind of in that space between dreamland and being fully awake. It's an in-between state. So I was in that state, really relaxed and the strangest thing happened. It was, I rarely wake up with songs in my head, but I woke up with a song in my head and it was as clear as day. It was almost like my head was an antenna and I was picking up some AM radio station on the edge of town. And it was, it wasn't Taylor Swift. It wasn't wait, any wait, cool song. Back up. Uh, did you say AM? AM. Yeah. Or All FM, right. whatever. Take your pick. Radio <laughs> station on the edge of town because the radio still exists, you know? Um, I'm going to bust you on that one. All right, go ahead. It was Row, Row, Row Your Boat, the nursery rhyme. And and it just kept playing over and over, and it was clear. And about the third or fourth time, something just clicked in me. And I had this moment of, oh, oh, my gosh. This is a really profound invitation. And to give you a little bit of context, like the week before had been, you know, you know, had been kind of a, I dealt with some anxiety and, you know, questions about um, the future and, you know, we're raising a teenage daughter who's in college, like all of these things, you know? So the background, there's like this background radiation of like anxiety in my life. Mm -hmm. And so this thing comes through, row, row, row your boat gently down the stream, merrily, merrily, merrily life is but a dream. And it was like a friend had jotted down instructions for life onto a post-it note and gave it to me. Yeah. And so I got up and I was trying to figure out, I was like, okay, I need to write this down. Like, what does this really mean? And I'd just like to read, here's what I wrote down. Okay. This is my interpretation of row, row, row your boat. Okay. Look around, look around you. See how you're being carried by the flow. It knows where it's going and how to get there. Your destination, which is the ocean into which all streams empty and return is inevitable. One way or another, you will arrive. So just chill out. Stop trying to row against the flow. Stay pointed downstream. Row with it, but gently. All of your hustling won't speed your trip all that much. And as important as you think you are, you'll never make the stream flow faster. It's enough to navigate around the boulders and driftwood that you encounter because that's what the, the paddle in your hand is for. It's for steering. And by the way, lighten up. Don't take things so seriously. If you hit the rapids and the gnarly bits along the way, which you will, the flow will always carry you to the other side of them. If you're going to row, you might as well embrace the adventure and have a laugh along the way. Oh, yeah. And life, your life, it's just a dream. It's just a story. So write one worth telling while you have this life because there's a little unsecret secret, and it's this. In truth, you're a soul. Life itself is playing as a person through you, so you really have nothing to lose. So row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. Merrily, 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 because your life is just a dream. Whew. Oh, my goodness. I, and there you have it. 
Oh my the God, man. truth of a nursery rhyme. You know what though, Kevin, jokes aside, like that's some deep ass shit. Like seriously, like that's no joke. Like I've never thought about that nursery rhyme. I stopped you right when you were telling me like that you had the moment of clarity and you thought about it because it hit me when you said it. And I was like, I don't want to, mm-hmm. I want to experience the rest with the audience, but your writing is so beautiful. And there's something about hearing you. I, I read your work, but hearing you speak it, I mm-hmm. feel the levity and the, the joy and the ease of, of your experience writing it. And the translation, I have so many things on my mind, the, the flow, right? The flow of life and the ease yeah. and the levity and that we are just souls. It's like, I don't even know where to start, but the thing that comes up for me most is this, um, if, if there's a stream of life and there's a flow and our job is to allow it to happen, even during the rough patches, what do you believe that flow or that stream really is? Is, is that, that's the universe, God, love? Like, is that where what do you do want I to believe it is? Well, I think it's, I think it's all that is. Um, yeah. Because if you just take that, like zoom out from the river thing, right? And see the landscape that it, it carves through, right? It's part of the landscape too. Like you can't separate the rain from the river, from the oceans, from the creeks, from all of these things, because they're all one thing. And so, um, it is all that is, but I just happen to be, you know, the singular guy in the aluminum canoe on that particular river, right. Ex- experiencing that particular rivulet of, um, of life, which is amazing. You know, so you you're sitting in the rain. You have this awareness. You write. Like, what is it left? How has it shifted something within you, or what is it given to you now that you've had this? Yeah, awareness? yeah. Um, probably more peace. I think more peace. There's a um, is it Robert Heinlein Heinlein who uh, wrote Stranger in a Strange Land. He so he was a science fiction writer. He invented a word and the word is grok. And to grok something means to like fully intuitively get it to the, like to the marrow of your bones, like you grok something. And so when I was laying in bed, you know, listening to row, row, row your boat, I, I, I grokked it. And it was like the essence of like that profound essence of like the simple truth just kind of became part of me. Mm -hmm. And there was this like, oh, okay, well, I can relax. Like it brought me to this place of like my anxiety just kind of disappeared because it's like, oh, yeah. I mean, of course, life is like a dream. Um, And there are lots of different ways that you can you can be in it just like there are many different ways of being on a river. Right. Like I could be in a canoe and try to paddle upstream or. Um, you know, I can turn downstream and paddle as hard as I can, but I'm not going to make it that much faster, you know, sooner to the ocean. Um, so there are lots of different ways to experience it. And I just saw, I saw all of these different things. It it felt like at the same time, I was like, oh, it's whatever I want it to be. And I just kind of relaxed. And so, you know, lucid dreaming, right? So you fall asleep at night and then you have a an ability to wake up in the dream and then an ability to sort of more decide the dream, right? Because I think a lot of people think about dreams and they're like, well, I'm sleeping and I can't remember most of it and I have no control over it. And it's just sort of weirdly happening, right? And it's kind of these funny fragments that you remember the next day, or even if you remember a lot, it doesn't feel like, you know, you're in control of the the narrative. Do when you say that, do you have more of a lucid dreaming sense of life then? Or is it more a, just a a good question. That's like inception, right? (laughs) It's like being in the dream and then the dream within the dream within the dream. And, uh, yeah. And being able to, I guess, tweak like 
be in the dream, but not of it or in the dream and of it at the same time. So yeah, no, I, I, I get that. And I think too, like, this is where, um, I don't know, for a long time, the whole dream metaphor thing just didn't work for me because, you know, very spiritual people would talk to me and say, you know, bro, just like, it's just a dream. I'm like, no, Wait, go jump off. always say like, bro first. <laughs> bro, bro. Or you know, yeah. Uh, yeah. Like the spiritual bros. Um, yeah. Go, like go jump off your roof and you'll see how, you know, how real the dream is. Yeah. Um, which is why I like to see it more like it's a story. I mean, life is a story, um, you know, and we're characters in it and there's who we think we are and, you know, who I think you are and all of those kinds of things. Mm-hmm. But it really is like when you awaken within, within the dream, like a lucid dream, you can still enjoy the dream. Mm-hmm. Um, you're just like, you're operating with a different physics at that point. You know, you can, like you see it for what it is and you can play within it. That's right. Like a lucid dreamer realizes, oh, I'm dreaming. Now I can just goof around with it. We have a mutual friend, Raul, who's obsessed with <laughs> learning how to lucid dream. It's very funny to me, but he has dream coaches and all this stuff. But his goal is to like wake up in his dream and then fly because once he realizes, oh, I'm asleep, then he can do what he can't do on the earth plane, which is fly, yeah. right? So he just wants yeah. to experience flying. And so if you have in your normal life, the awareness that perhaps this is more like a dream state, right? And you relax into it and you know that all the waters are flowing to the oceans, which I think is such a beautiful idea, right? We're all we're all in an evolution. We're all going to get there, right? We're all returning back to the one. And so then in that more relaxed state, perhaps you can play with um, what life has to offer a little more and not um, feel so disempowered perhaps or you know, yeah. like a dream state where it's just happening and you don't feel a sense of um, control or, or ownership of one's life, right? Like that that's right. to me the epitome of when life is going really badly is when I think life is happening to me, <laughs> right? Yeah. I can't, right? I can't like manipulate the dream at all. I'm just sitting here going and not in a good way. It's happening and it's just, it's like, it's like a unpleasant, anxious, stressed out situation instead of sitting back and saying it's all happening, but not to me or right. Um, yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. And it's, you know, I, I think that the, you know, some of the most profound truths are the simplest. And I do think that there are all of these truths that are just stitched subtly into all of our myths and nursery rhymes and stories, right? Um, For the very purpose of like what I experienced, where they're like these little Easter eggs that get found, you know, they just kind of pop up unexpectedly. And they're, you know, amazing reminders in the same way that like they pop up in the movies that we love, you know, around identity and awakening and, you know, all of these things. So, yeah. You know, Kevin, like, I believe now that the greatest art, the greatest nursery rhymes, all these things that stick around. The reason is that they speak to something deep within us, right? There's a, a, tr- a truth in them and we don't know why we know it's true, but we can feel it, right? So that nursery rhyme, it's like a silly little thing, but we all know it and it keeps getting repeated. And I just love so much that you brought that forward. I mean, I truly, um, I'm just taken by this one, Kevin, like, you know, it's, it's beautiful. I love your epiphany. I love the writing. If somebody wants to check out your Substack and, and see this writing, how do they find that? I don't mean to shamelessly promote, but I really, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, you can, you can go to, uh, Kevin Kaiser, K A I S E R dot substack.com. Um, I have a weekly, uh, column I write called the rewilded soul. And yeah. so I typically share like two short essays and then a poem because I write pretty things too. So you do. I love your poetry. Well, thank you so yes. much for sharing, Kevin. I appreciate it. My pleasure. It. And Learned. this will haunt you all for days. I promise you. <laughs> Beautiful.